This video builds on my last one about a simple Pico RV32 SOC on the Tang Nano 9K FPGA board. Now, we'll use Verilog inference to create the SRAMs. This greatly simplifies the memory's initialization and helps to make the design automatically parameterizable to allow varying SRAM sizes. Later, I'll show how the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope succeeds and sometimes fails to give visibility into the design's operation. But now, let's go into the Verilog and some changes to the software build process. There's a new file called sram8bit.v. It creates an 8-bit wide SRAM that can be initialized by a memory initialization file. And this is being done using Verilog inference and not the Gowan primitives like we had before. This allows a much cleaner parameter interface. The regular interface signals are actually unchanged, but the parameters are quite different. Instead of this vast list of initialization strings, we have just two parameters. The first, SRAM adder width, determines the size of the SRAM. Uh, an address width of 11 gives 2048 bytes of memory. But there's also a parameter meminit file, and this creates hexadecimal digits that simply initialize the memory. And the syntax for that is here. So that's how you can initialize memory in inferred memory in Verilog. The uh, implementation isn't particularly complicated. So if there's a write that's gated by CE and write on the positive edge of the clock and just sets data into memadder, for reads, the memory is stored in a register. And reset clears that register. That's about all there is to the implementation of this file. It's quite a bit cleaner and nice. The file sram.v isn't too different. It instantiates four of the sram8s passing the uh, addresses and write strobes, kind of like before. The main thing is that it is passing the sram adder width parameter from top.v on down, thus determining the size of the memory, and it also assigns the names of the memory init files to each of the instances. The top level module has some changes. So one thing, towards the top here, it now includes file sram adder width .v, which is created by the conf to init program. That allows that program to basically select the size of the sram, and as well as producing the initialization files that initialize it. And let's see, we compute mem bytes from sram adder width, that's the total amount of memory. And then down here in the address selects, we use that to determine when the sram is selected. This new version of the project is on GitHub in its own branch. See below for a link and some instructions on how to access it. Let's move over to the software. The key changes are in conv to init.c. Remember, this is the program that takes the binary from the toolchain and produces the files that Verilog needs. So this program now takes two command line arguments. The first is the SRAM address width, like 11 and the second is the name of the binary file that came from the toolchain. And so what it does is it creates four files. The first is sram adder width.v that top.v includes, as we just saw, and also the four memory initialization files. And all of this is invoked from the make file. And so now, in the make file, to choose the amount of memory that you want the Pico RV32 to have, you just set sram adder width to either 11, 12, or 13, and type make, and then rebuild the, the Verilog project as before. So if you use 11, you get 8192 bytes of sram, 12, 16, 384, 13, 32, 768. So it's much more flexible than it used to be, as well as having a prettier Verilog implementation. Those are the updates to the original video that I wanted to tell you about, but as a bonus, I also tested the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope with the Pico RV32 SoC. If you're interested, keep watching. Let's try the Goen Analysis Oscilloscope on this project. And that means we're running on Windows, because I've never been able to make that oscilloscope work on, on Linux. And also, I've noticed that the oscilloscope often causes projects to miss timing when you add it. So I want to slow this clock speed down. And the way that I did that is, here we go to top.v, is I added an instantiation, here we are, of the Goen RPLL. And I made a video about clock stuff on the Goen FPGAs, and so I'll put a link to that below, and you can see the details of how you do this. But I'm using this to slow the clock from 27 megahertz down to 5.4 megahertz. This also implied that I had to make a small change to the software. In main.c, I changed the, the UART divisor to, to be correct for this new frequency.
Now I'll quickly go through the steps to add the GAO file that we need. And I'll not explain too much because I made a video about that also, and I'll put that below. So basically we go here and we say new GAO config file, taking standard, next, next. Finish that, double click on the file to, to configure it. And I'll double click on trigger port zero here. And I want to say what I want to trigger on, which is mem valid. In particular, I want to trigger on its rising edge. So I say search, pick that, pick that. And OK, and uh, now it's here under trigger port zero. I have to enable a match unit, M0, um, trigger port zero. We want basic with edges and rising edge of mem valid. And I can scroll over here and see that the R is really there. Double click here, pick M0, OK, and that should be that. So now we go to capture options, pick our capture clock, which is the 5.4 megahertz system clock. Like there, and that's there, good. And I'm going to daringly increase this to 4096 because we're not using too much BS RAM. The address SD RAM address lines is set to 11. I like trigger position to be at one. And then we have to add the signals that we want to display. And I'm going to add our trigger signal, and valid. And then just add a bunch more. Uh, the bus signals are the ones that are interesting. So like INSTR. Search and pick that. And uh, let's see, mem, mem valid we've already got, so mem ready. Search and add that. The right strobes, mem WSTRV. Search and add that. And let's be daring. Let's try to add all of the, the right data signals and all of the read data signals. So mem R data. It'll be 64 signals in total. I don't know if it'll work. And then add mem w data. And so all those are both there. Press control S to save. And now we have to rebuild all, which as usual will take a while. And the build's complete. So we program. using the Gowan programmer on Windows. So that's complete. And now we see if the oscilloscope can work. So tools, oscilloscope, pick the middle one, continuous capture, the program's already running, so it should trigger. And it looks like it isn't triggering. So we have a fail. And I'm gonna press the reset button and see if that helps it. Nope, it looks like this configuration is just not going to work. So I'll stop. And I don't think we checked the timing analysis report. No excuses there. It's all blue. It looks like it worked. And it seems to have, there's some evidence that it understands our 5.4 megahertz clock. So didn't work this time. Let's try a simpler configuration and see if it can work. I'm going to remove W data. So we'll have to save the RAO file and rebuild everything, which will take a while. And notice these clock errors. I really don't understand these. They're somewhat concerning. Maybe someday I can figure them out. And the build is complete. Let's go to process and check the timing analysis report. So it's all blue, which is good. But we'll make that go away and uh, program. Programming complete run the oscilloscope, picking the middle option, and just try that, see if it triggers. And it does this time, though it likes this simpler configuration. Let's see if we can make some sense of this. Is it really working? So the way I want to do that is to stop, and then I'm going to hold the reset button down on the FPGA board and do a single capture just coming out of reset. And let's see if it triggers. And it does. So if I zoom in, I can see this read here underneath the memready assertion. So this should be the opcode of the very first instruction that's fetched. Is it? Let's go to the software and do a disassembly. 
And and I can move this over here a little bit. And this over here a little bit. And uh, sure enough, 2137, 2137. It looks like it decoded the opcode of the first fetch. And then the second fetch we would find under the next memready assertion. And we can see these are instructions because, you know, memvalid is high and, and instruction is high. And so that's 3980EF. That looks good. And then the next one is this FD, you know, thing ending in 13. So that is the first instruction of main. So let's search for main. And sure enough, there it is. So it looks like it's correctly decoding the the instruction fetches, you know, that are showing up in the memr data signal. So that's useful. I wish that the Goan analysis oscilloscope worked in all cases though, but but it does seem like that when it works, it tells the truth. So that's good. I think I'll put the this version of the program onto the GitHub in a in a branch, which I'll provide a little bit more information about later. But I think I'll do it with the GAO disabled by default. So you can go here and say disable, and that should be ready to go. I think I'll end the video here. See below for links and Git instructions. And thanks for watching.